Hey everyone, I am pleased today to introduce my next module for Cherry Audio Voltage Modular, Septitone. Septitone is a heptatonic scale quantizer, which means it quantizes and it only supports seven tones. That includes the ones you would expect, major, minor, a bunch of other common ones as well. In addition to quantizing, each of these scale degrees can be toggled off, either by using a button or a gate. It also supports a modulatable root, where the order of the roots follows the circle of fifths for a more musical root modulation. And lastly, it has two different gate modes, one which is more like a sample and hold type of behavior, and another which only quantizes when the gate signal is high. The combination of all three of these features allow a lot of interesting creative use of quantization. Let's take a look. So if you're not familiar with what a quantizer does, I can show that real quick. So over here I have an LFO, I have it set to a ramp wave, and you can see our output here is, uh, as you would expect, a ramp wave here in red. If we were to patch that control voltage into our oscillator and use that as the pitch, we would get, well, we get kind of an annoying alarm clock uh, car alarm sound isn't very pleasing and that's where the quantizer comes in. Instead of using that value to feed the pitch control voltage to our oscillator, we can instead use a quantizer like Septitone. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to patch that ramp wave in and I'll patch the output of the quantizer into the oscillator. Now you notice that we're not getting anything out and that's because Septitone requires a gate input to work. Whenever the gate is high it will perform the quantization. So I'm going to use this square wave here on the second LFO. And you can watch over here on the oscilloscope, the green line is the quantized, the red line is the original, and the blue line is the gate signal. And whenever a gate happens, we will snap that voltage to something in the chosen root and scale. So that gives a pretty good audible and visual demonstration of what exactly a quantizer is doing. All of these little steps that you're seeing here are corresponding to volt per octave values which match C major in all of these degrees. Now one of the fun things about Septitone is you can enable and disable all of the degrees at will. So for example, if I took everything out but just the root and the fifth, up here on the LCD you can see what the uh, volt per octave pitch that we're sending out is. And you can see that now with just the root and fifth, this would be C and G. And sure enough, you can see up here, we're getting just C and G. You can change that out for something else. Now, in addition to these buttons, these gate, these uh, degrees are in fact gateable. So we could feed any gate signal that we want. So I could pass in a random voltage here or whatever else I wanted to, and that will toggle it on and off as the control voltage progresses. Now you can get really creative using this and I'll show you that when we get to the example patches. Now, sometimes you might actually want the opposite, which is whenever your gate is high, you do not want the degree to be included, and when the gate is low, you do. In that case, it's possible to invert the incoming gate signal, and you can do that by double-clicking on one of the buttons. So now we can reverse that around, and whenever the gate is low, the degree will be included, and when the gate is high, the degree will not be included. Now that's somewhat of an advanced usage, but when we get into the example patches, I'll show you how that can be really helpful. Now one other thing down here before we look at the section up above is sometimes you might want to do uh, really creative stuff and you want to invert everything all at once, and that's what this invert here is for. What this invert here is, it's kind of like a global invert. It will take all of the states of the different degrees and it will give you the opposite. 
So right now you can see that we have the root, the third, and the fifth enabled. And so that will give us C, E, and G. And sure enough, up here, if you look at the output, we're only getting C, E, and G. If I was to hit invert, it will flip this, and we will only get the second, fourth, sixth, and seventh. And so if you watch up here, you can see, sure enough, we're getting D, F, A, and B, which is these ones here that are not extinguished. Both of those invert features can be used to add some extra interesting flavor to your quantization. So there's a couple of other things. Uh, as you would expect, the root is modulatable. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, the order of these roots follows the circle of fifths. So for example, if I was to grab a sine wave here and to bring it in, now one thing you'll notice is that whenever the root is being modulated, we're getting a little asterisk symbol here, and that's showing us that the root that is currently active is being modulated to, it's not the base root that we had started with. So I think one thing that's interesting there, even though that doesn't sound amazing, it doesn't sound that far off from what you would expect. And that's the advantage of modulating to nearby scales is you don't get scales that are really wildly different, uh, roots rather, that are really wildly different from what you're currently using. All right, so one last thing um, that I wanna show you here, and I'll cover one bonus feature, and then we'll get into some advanced patches. And that is this hold mode here. Now there are two possible ways that the gate input can be treated. And the, mo the mode that we're in now, whenever hold is up, in other words, when it's near the word hold, the output here will act like a sample and hold module would. That is, whenever a gate fires, the input at in will be grabbed, it will be quantized, and that output will remain on the out jack until the next gate signal arrives. And sure enough, if you look over here, you can see whenever there's a leading edge, the width of the step in green, which is our quantized output, is the same width as the crest and trough of our square wave. Now, if we toggle this down into non-hold mode, instead what it will do is it will only output the quantized value when the gate is high, and when the gate is low, it will output the original. So this is in hold mode. That is not hold mode. So in this in this lower mode, when quantization is only active when the gate is, that can be used for all types of stuff. Obviously, you can get weird and crazy if you want. You can get really creative and out there. But a more useful functional usage of that could be if you wanted to allow glide through or vibrato at the end of a pitch. This can allow you to control your gate signal so that you're only quantizing when you don't want to glide or when you don't want to be executing some kind of vibrato. There's one last bonus little feature here and then we'll get into some sample patches, and that's this button here. So uh, as, I was, as I was creating this uh, module, one of the things that I was finding is that if this gate signal is independent from the envelope that is powering whatever voice septitone is quantizing, it sometimes can be fun to just freeze the pitch and to let the envelope keep running, and that's what this is here. So whenever this button is turned on, whatever the output here is, will be held regardless of any gates or any incoming clock signals. This will be held until you toggle it off again. And that just adds a little bit of performance flair that you can toss into your patches for some extra fun. Speaking of patches, now that you know what all of the controls and functionality of this module are, let's get into some example patches. Starting off with something simple, I've got something set up that might look similar to things that you're already doing so you're starting with a nice sequencer that you already like and putting together some kind of voice in this case i've got two analog oscillators a ladder filter an envelope and a delay so nothing too outside of the norm now one of the things that you might have encountered is here in a sequencer like octagon by cherry audio 
It's a very nice sequencer. There's a lot of functionality, a lot of fun divisions and rhythmic tricks that it can do. But when you move around these pitch lighters, it will tell you what the pitch is on the hover text. But unless you know music theory and scales fairly well, it might not always be obvious which pitch should go in which scale. And furthermore, if you were to make a second voice and use a second instance of octagon, it might be hard to get them to sound like they should fit together. And this is where something like a quantizer, such as septitone, can come in. So I just kind of toss that together, and I have no idea what scale that it is in. But with septitone, we can uh, conform that to the scale of our choosing. Now, another thing that you might do before I introduce Septitone to this patch is you might want to be turning on slides to get a little bit of uh, extra flair on things. So if I was just to drop in a couple of slides here. Now, what those slides are doing is if we were to take a look at that pitch CV on a scope, what those slides are doing is they're making the transition between the pitch steps have a little bit more of a decay or an attack to them. Now you can hear it on this one here. You can see it on the scope here, right there. There's the diagonal line, diagonal line. Those diagonal lines are the slides taking effect. Now, we can introduce a quantizer into this, so we'll bring in septitone. And uh, a lot of times what a quantizer would do is it would, it would choke those out. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn them off for the moment, and we'll come back to that in a second. So to get a quantizer wired up in a patch, it's very simple. We take the CV out, patch that into septitone, and we're gonna take the output of septitone and put that into the two oscillators, and then the gate that would normally be driving our envelope will go into septitone as well. We can play around here and we find something we like. We'll do A minor. It's very easy to change your mind and go with a different scale, or just to listen to all of them and decide what you want to do. All right, so that's sounding pretty cool. It would be easy to add another voice to that another instance of septitone to make sure that we're in the same scale. What I'm going to do though is let's add a little bit of variety. So while this sequence is cool, it can get a little monotonous. And one of the things we can do is we could leverage septitone's ability to bring tones in and out of the scale and we could keep the same rhythm, but perform it with different tones available for quantization. And the easiest way to do that is with the invert switch. So take a listen. I wanna play the sequence through once, and then I will invert the pitch selection on septitone, and it will sound similar, but different. So we could automate that. Uh, what I could do is I could take the clock output coming from whatever sequencer it is that I'm using, and I could divide that down. So in this case, I'll take it all the way down to 16. And then I will use that as the clock source in just a, a eight-step sequencer, which is a fairly basic module that I believe everybody has with Voltage Modular. We'll bring this down to six steps, and now each of these steps will represent something. I can take the CV output here of eight step and pass it into the invert, and we can sort of make this into a little bit of a gate sequencer. Um, so I brought this down to six steps. What we'll do is the first three will let play through normal, and then the second three will make high. So in other words, when it's low, we'll get our normal selection, and then when this is all the way up at the top, we will invert it. Let's take a listen. Yeah, 
Yeah, so you get the idea there. Now there's a lot more creative ways that you could probably figure out how to integrate that into a patch, but this gives you an idea about how you might do some fundamentals. Let's take a look at the uh, glide part of this. So I had showed you before that when glide was on, we got that, um, that uh, diagonal slope, either an attack or a decay in the stepping of the pitch. One of the things that will happen though is we will not always get that here with septitone and that is because in this hold mode as soon as we have a value coming in it'll be quantized and it'll be held on the output and that will basically eliminate our slides. So if you watch here on the scope, you'll be able to see that in red, we can see that the slides are there, and in green, they are not. So in this case, green is the output from Subtotone, and red is the output from Octagon. Blue in this case is the gate signal that we're getting. Now I had mentioned this in the description of the controls, but if we change the hold mode here, the quantization will only take effect while this gate is high. And if you look at the gate pulse, you can see there's a little bit of a gap right before the next note comes in. We also have a uh, knob over here on this particular sequencer to control the gate time. So let's play around with that and see what happens. So what's happening there is by adjusting the length of this gate signal, we are able to turn off quantization and we're hearing the unquantized value. Now that's letting a little bit of that glide through, but it's also jumping away from our quantized value and giving a very weird, almost uneasy uh, clash to the scale that we're in. Now maybe that's not your most favorite tone in the world, but I think you can see that there's a lot of creative possibilities in coming up with interesting ways to combine signals. Let me give you one last more example and then we'll jump to a more complex patch. What if we wanted to add a little bit of uh, vibrato or modulation there on the end? What we could do is we could take the, we could take the pitch signal, which is coming out of our quantizer, and we could blend in an LFO and we could quantize that signal. So I'm going to keep it the same color scheme. So what is happening here is the red line will be our unquantized signal. Let me dial down that LFO. And that's going to get mixed with our pitch signal. And then we will pass both of those into Septitone. And we're going to use the gate to after most of the note has played, we're gonna pull the gate down and we're gonna let this unquantized vibrato signal in through. So we're getting a little bit weird and out there, but I think you can see that there's a lot of room for creativity. 
So in this patch, I have three identical voices set up. You can see on each I have an LFO, an oscillator, a filter, and an envelope VCA. Again, I'm using the drum sequencer, and each of these three lanes corresponds to one voice. Right now, there's no pitch information. I've just set them up and made them roughly sound like each other. And you can see I've punched in a little bit of a pattern here. All right, so let's start playing with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an instance of Septitone for each of the voices. All right, and with that in place, I'll go ahead and I'll wire up the gate signal of each to trigger the appropriate instance of Septitone. And we'll set up all of the pitch inputs. And then I'll go ahead and set the LFO as the input for the quantization. Now notice that I'm using a different, notice that I'm using a different shape on each one. Now one of the things we could do is we could carve out space where each voice is going to play just some of the scale degrees. So let's say the first voice will play root and second, the second voice will play third and fourth, and the final voice will play fifth and sixth, and we'll just leave set like that. Now, one of the interesting things that we could do here is we could use um, some of the output of the other gates, the voices that aren't playing, to affect what's happening and to start creating harmonies. So if, if I moved some of these triggers to being a little bit more on top of each other, so for example, if I did that and then that, then maybe something like that. One of the things that we could do is we could allow more of the tones through. So for example, I could turn on a little bit more of these tones, but we could use um, the gate signals to invert some. So for example, if I grabbed the gate here, you can see that this gate is triggering this voice we could use that gate signal to maybe turn on and off some of these other ones. So let's say, let's say like that. So this is your lesson, kids, to always remember to use attenuators. <laughs> continue adding some more interesting stuff here. Tossing in an invert here to get some variety. 